here it is. Uh, so we say, dear Mike, this mail will get you started with Dynamics NAD for tablets. Step one, get the app. Okay, so I should tap on download on the app store. Okay, this is board. And wow, there it is. There's a lot. So that's right. So for the first time, this is Microsoft Dynamics <coughs> NAD, which is publicly available from the app store right now. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and download this and install it on my device. That's going to take a few seconds. And of course, if I had an Android tablet, then I'd find the same Dynamics NAD for Android on the Google Play Store. If I had a Windows device, it would be the app available on the Windows Store. Mm -hmm. This is already installed now. Let's just see that on my test, on my uh, home screen. Here. And there you go. That's the Dynamics NAD tile. Let me go back to my email and see what other instructions my IT admin has sent me. Okay, so step two, get connected. I need to tap this link to get connected to my company server. And then the step three, where I sign in using my credentials. Again, pretty straightforward, right? I'm going to tap this link. And it's launched the app. And now all I need to do is enter a username. So what that link does, it launches the app automatically, configures the app to the, to the endpoint of the instance you're connecting to, so you don't have to think, worry about all that. All you have to do is enter the last few pieces of information that we cannot do on Mac, which is your credentials. That's right. So now I just need to tap on the arrow. Okay. And now it's connecting my device to my company's Dynamics NAD server on Azure. And here we are, NAD on the iPad. This is it. This is Dynamics NAD for iPad right here. And as you can see, this is the role center, so this is uh, basically a continuation of our role tailoring technology. And as always, the role center gives me an overview of my work. For example, on the right-hand side, um, I can keep an eye on trends using charts. Uh, I can scroll through more information here. I've got my list of favorite customers. And on the left-hand side, I've got some basic BI, uh, which in this case happens to be the same enhanced cues which Jonathan showed us a moment ago. Uh, and notice how we've really positioned everything very carefully so that I can scroll and navigate through this experience just using my thumb. So I'm going to tap on the overview sales invoice account with my left thumb. Mm -hmm. That's going to drill me down to my overview invoices. And again, using my left thumb, I'm just going to tap on the back arrow to return to the goal center. So we've really designed this around how our users hold and interact with tablets. So we've really turned this into a touch first experience. Um, if I can draw your attention to the top of the screen, we've got the familiar three dots. I'm going to tap on that and come again. And that gives me my actions in the action tray. And right next to that is the hamburger button. That's what we call it. Yes, the person we call hamburger button. Yes. Um, and that brings up my navigation pane where I've got all my list places. So, as you can see, it's a really fast and fluid experience as I tap through the different screens and as I scroll. And this is really something which our users today love and <laughs> expect out of the tablet app. This is something we really, really focused on. We set the bar really high on experience. We wouldn't sell for anything less. It had to be fast, it had to be fluid, it had to be smooth, it had to feel like a great app that you experience today for all sorts of products and services. Yeah. So we've spent a lot of time in the role center, but the rest of my data is just a few taps away. So let me go to my customer list. As a salesperson, that's something I want to do very often. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's a very simple and clean list. And I can easily scroll through this list again using my thumbs. So really easy for that. The small details, like as Mike is scrolling, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, as we run out of space, we automatically start fetching data from the server. So the list populates really fast and it's a really uh, fluid and smooth access to browse the data. That's right. And it's, it's quite a long list, so finding my customer here is not easy. So for that, I'm going to use the new search function. I'm going to tap in the search bar on the top right. I'm going to type in, uh, what, what was his name, Ken, something. Um, so now I've narrowed down my list considerably to just a small set of records. Well, in that, we're used to searching about specific columns. So what's specific about this search we have on the tablet experience is a multi-column search. So you don't need to worry about how you're going to find the data. This could going to worry about what you're looking for, and we'll find it for you. That's right. So I didn't need to pinpoint which column to go and search on. And in fact, I can enter text over here. I can use numbers. I can even use filter characters right. and narrow down my list even further. Mm -hmm. But now that I have narrowed down my list, what can I do with it? Well, if I tap 
bring up the extra thing again. I think that sentence to Excel. So it's opened that in Excel. And I get to choose from all the apps I have on my tablet on how I want to open this file. I'll use the, the green one. And in just a few seconds, I've got my data from the NAV app and into the world of Excel. So here we are, one of the, link, the oldest features we have in the ability to integrate with Office and ability to export list Excel. Now that same functionality, the same NAV experience works on the iPad and works with Office for the iPad. That's right, so now I can do some quick analysis on this data. I can also share this via Office 365 and collaborate with my peers. So I can take advantage of all the rich capabilities which come with other apps, such as Excel. But let's return to NAV. And what else should we try? How about this? Uh, there's some pretty sophisticated functions that we can do directly using touch on the tablet. For example, I can now create a sales invoice for the specific customer. So as Mike is doing, I just wanted to point out here, this is not a virtual app. This is a full ERP experience on the tablet. And I think we're one of the few companies, if not the only one, that has that full experience on the tablet today. How's it going, Mike? Pretty good. Is some bicycles? bicycles? Yeah, some, some bicycles again is what we do. Um, and it just took a few taps for me to create that. In fact, you'll notice that the customer details have been populated um, directly on, on the invoice here. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I need to do, of course, is to email this to my customer. So let's do that. I tap on the new email action. Uh, yes, I do want to post to save the invoice. And I'll choose my mail app, and let's open up the email there, and guess what? We actually have the invoice using a new format, using the word layout which Peter just created. So, same experience, now on the iPad. On the iPad, generate an invoice on the back end, generate a PDF, send it from the server to the client, in the email attached, and now you can send an email to the customer. This looks really fantastic. I think a look at that one. Right? Yes, you may. It looks fantastic. Well, whoa, what happened now? Did that break well, anything? No, it didn't break anything, no. <laughs> but uh, what you just witnessed there, Marco, is in fact uh, our ability to change modes when you rotate your tablet. So whilst I was holding it in landscape mode, which gives me an overview of my tablet, <coughs> you picked it up and held it in portrait mode, which now focuses on the content. So it's these two modes that we've applied here uh, to all pages, not just the whole center, where you can switch between uh, get an overview versus focus on the content. And this is something we paid a lot of attention to. We did a lot of studies with end users. We observed how they use tablets today. So we realized when they're actually actively working on the tablet, they tend to use it in a landscape mode, which means they hold it one hand and use another finger to tap on the tablet, and what we call so lean forward mode. And then we realized that when we work from the sort of couch on this in the evening, when we go back home, they tend to work in the lean back mode, where they can hold the tablet like a document. And when they do that, we adjust everything to that mode of operation. As a matter of fact, if you look at on the top of the screen, the three dots, the ellipsis, and the hammer icon are placed perfectly for my thumb, so I can easily access all that information from one hand and can perform those operations in travel. Thanks very much, Mike. That's right. Um, so yeah, as you've seen, this is really easy to get onto my iPad. This is really easy to use. And you know what? We've actually made it ridiculously easy for these guys to customize and extend this. But we'll talk about that in a later session. Okay, we'll take a look at that soon. Thanks so much. Everybody.